And joining us now, Dr. Vivek Murthy, former Surgeon General and co-chair of the Biden Transition COVID Task Force. Doctor, the, the latest numbers on the COVID surge are deeply alarming. Let's take a look at some of them. More than 184,000 new cases just on Friday. That's up 76% over the past two weeks. More than 68,000 people now in hospitals and more than 1,400 deaths Friday. Question, what's going on? What's causing this really troubling surge? Well, Chris, you're right that we are at an alarming phase uh, of this pandemic. And these are staggering numbers that we never really thought we would see in terms of cases and hospitalizations, not to mention the overall death toll. But what's happening is that a couple of things. One is we never really got our caseload down to a level that was truly manageable in the spring. And we didn't actually have the testing and contact tracing to prevent subsequent rises in infection. But what's happening now in particular is that with winter, as people move indoors, uh, this is actually the perfect setup for the virus because we know it likes it's easier to spread indoors and outdoors. But there's one last component here which is really important, which is pandemic fatigue. You know, people are tired. We've been at this pandemic now for many months, uh, and I get that. And a part of that fatigue means that people are letting others into their bubble. They're getting together for in-person dinner parties, for game nights, and public health departments are now tracing more and more cases back to these kind of gatherings. Uh, so you put this all together and you see the explosive spread that we have. So what is the Trump administration doing wrong at this point, given that a lot of this just seems to be uh, baked into the cake, and what specifically, and I mean specifically, will the Biden administration do better? Well, there are a few things for us to think about in terms of addressing the current surge. One thing I really want to emphasize is that when you get to numbers that are this bad, the most immediate thing that we can do to reduce the spread, and it actually lies in our behavior and the choices that we make. It turns out that wearing masks, keeping our distance from others, washing our hands, these seem almost uh, too simple, but they're very powerful in actually reducing this spread. But what Vice President, what President-elect Biden is, uh, is, has talked about in terms of his plan, what he wants to do differently, what he wants to emphasize for day one, is really a plan that focuses on expanding our testing capacity so that we can do better surveillance testing and diagnostic testing, but also increase our contact tracing force so that we can contain infection once we find it. He wants to increase the production of PPE or protective equipment so our healthcare workers all have masks and gloves when they need it. Uh, and he wants to really put clear guidance together, evidence-based guidance, so that schools and businesses, but also faith organizations, youth sports leagues and families know how to operate safely. Chris, though, I should just say one more important thing here, which is that none of this is going to be possible if we don't rebuild public trust. That's really the most important foundation here. And the way you do that is by communicating honestly, by leading with science and scientists in the face of this pandemic, and ultimately by delivering results. Is the delay in the transition, because President Trump is contesting the election, is that delay hurting the ability of the Biden administration to take over on January 20th in dealing with the COVID pandemic? Well, it's very important, Chris, for the transition to be able to talk to uh, the, the existing administration. And the reason is that there are thousands and thousands uh, of career civil servants, of political appointees uh, who have been working very hard on this pandemic uh, for many months now. They have plans that are in process. They have data that they've collected that the public uh, doesn't always have access to. And to be able to see that data, see those plans, it's what's going to help us put together the best possible uh, product in the end. So those dialogues are critical. Uh, there, you want to get them started as soon as possible. And there's a lot of work for us to do now still, even though we don't have access to the departments, but we're going to need that uh, as soon as possible uh, to make this all work well. One of the big questions, of course, is whether the country is going to have to engage in another lockdown. One of your colleagues on the COVID task force, the Biden COVID task force, talked this week about a possible four to six week national lockdown and President Trump responded to that. Take a look. We can pay people to lose, lose their jobs. We can pay small businesses. We can take care of city, state, and county governments. This administration will not be going to a lockdown. Hopefully, the 
the uh, whatever happens in the future, who knows which administration it will be. I guess time will tell. But uh, I can tell you this administration will not go to a lockdown. Now, President-elect Biden says he's not thinking of a national lockdown. One of your colleagues on the task force said this weekend you're thinking not of an on-off switch, but more of a dimmer. Having said that, the governor of New Mexico just issued a two-week stay-at-home measure. The governor of Oregon is talking about a partial two-week lockdown. Can't you honestly say, if things get bad enough, aren't we going to need a national lockdown? Well, that's a measure of last resort, Chris, and I'm glad you raised this because the way we think about lockdowns, I think, is different now than it was in the spring. In the spring, when we didn't know a lot about COVID, we responded, uh, in a sense, with an on-off switch. We we just shut things down because you know we didn't know exactly how this was spreading and where it was spreading. But we've learned a lot more since then that tells us that the better way to think about these safety restrictions is more as a dial that we turn up and down depending on severity. And that's really the key here, is applying this, these restrictions judiciously and precisely. If you look in New York City, for example, they're applying uh, not broad restrictions everywhere, but looking at specific zip codes to see where the outbreak is, is severe. What we need, Chris, and the reason that you see so much variation in what states are doing, is that we don't have a national alert system guided by the best possible evidence that can help states and localities determine when to dial up and down these restrictions. And we also a lot of, don't have adequate resources for them to put these restrictions in place, namely schools, for example, which still don't have uh, resources to expand class sizes, hire more teachers, and improve ventilations. If we just lock down the entire country without targeting our efforts, then we are going to exacerbate the pandemic fatigue people are feeling. We are going to hurt jobs in the economy. We are going to shut down schools and hurt the education of our children. So we've got to approach this with the precision of a scalpel rather than the, the blunt force of an ax. Then there is the issue of the vaccine, which seems to be making remarkable progress. President Trump talked on Friday about getting it out as quickly as possible, starting perhaps even in December. But then he <laughs> talked about Governor Cuomo of New York, who has said that he wants to check any vaccine the Trump administration delivers. Take a look. He doesn't trust the fact that it's this White House, this administration. So we won't be delivering it to New York until we have authorization to do so. What do you think of President Trump's statements singling out New York for a delay in the vaccine? And how does the Biden transition administration plan to deal, one, with getting out the vaccine and also dealing with the issue of people's concern about the safety, the reliability of actually getting vaccinated? Well, Chrissy, you're, you're bringing up one of the most challenging parts of this pandemic response, which is how to deliver that vaccine. You know, we vaccinated Americans for many years, uh, you know, in our country, but the campaign we're going to have to build to vaccinate enough people to create herd immunity in America will be the most ambitious vaccination campaign, I believe, uh, in our country's history. Uh, and doing that requires people to trust that that vaccine is safe and that it's effective. Unfortunately, we know from recent polls that a significant number of people are worried that the process of developing the vaccine, approving it, may have been politicized. So now the onus is on us to be as transparent as possible in helping them understand what the science does say, having experts review the data, making that data readily available so that even people outside the government can review it. That's what we're going to have to do. And ultimately, the way we allocate this vaccine has to be determined uh, based on need. Uh, and that and that alone, uh, we can't afford to let politics creep in to decisions we make around the vaccine because otherwise we're going to put lives at stake. Dr. Murthy, thank you. Thanks for your time this weekend, and we'll, of course, be tracking the work of your task force. Well, thank you so much, Chris. It's, it's really good to be with you today.